Okay, so in the previous video, uh, what we saw was that if you expose a cell to uh, transforming growth factor beta, or TGF beta, um, it's going to activate a signaling pathway that is going to lead to that cell expressing increased levels of the uh, tumor suppressor genes P15 and P21. What we now want to see is how exactly do those uh, tumor suppressor proteins work. Okay, so we'll start with P15. So, uh, let's draw P15 like so. P15 targets the cyclin-dependent kinase 4. Okay, so it binds to cyclin-dependent kinase 4, which I'll draw here. So, right. So this um, sort of enzyme structure here that I've drawn is a cyclin um, dependent kinase 4 enzyme. Okay, and cyclin dependent kinase 4 is uh, extremely important in the G1 phase of uh, the cell cycle, basically. Okay, and this protein that is bound to it is P15, the tumor suppressor gene P15. So let me color in P15 in this red color. And I will color in the cyclin-dependent kinase 4 in blue. And I should mention, of course, that cyclin-dependent kinase 4 is usually just denoted CDK4. Okay, so that's also usually denoted CDK4. Right, so in the G1 phase of the cell cycle, um, uh, what happens is uh, cyclin-dependent kinase 4 levels gradually get higher. So I suppose I should probably actually just give a brief talk about the cell cycle. Okay, um, so in the cell cycle, what happens is uh, cells go through the process of going from being one cell to being two cells. So it's the process by which a cell divides. Now, the first phase of the cell cycle is a phase known as interphase. Okay, so this is interphase. Now, in interphase, um, basically, the cell is not actually in the process of division. So it's, it's the phase, basically, where the cell is quiescent. It's not dividing, basically. Okay. Um, then, the cell receives signals that say, okay, it, it's time to divide, basically. You need to start dividing. So there's many different signals that we've looked at for what can tell a cell to start dividing. So we've looked at uh, the Wnt beta catenin pathway. So uh, a cell can receive this uh, Wnt signal, uh, which can cause an increase in the uh, transcriptional coactivator, which is beta catenin. And beta catenin will then interact with T cell factors and lymphoid enhancer factors. Um, and um, by doing that, it will modulate their functions as transcription factors, and it will increase the transcription of genes associated with the with cell division, basically. Other pathways are growth factor receptors, uh, which can activate uh, the uh, MAP kinase ERK pathway or um, the PI3 kinase protein kinase B uh, mTOR pathway. And uh, again, they can lead to the transcription of um, proteins associated with growth. Okay, so those sort of signals uh, can cause a cell to move from uh, the interphase to what's known as the G1 phase of the cell cycle. So this is G1 phase, or the first growth phase. So this is the first growth phase. Now, in the first growth phase, what you do is you get ready to divide, basically. Um, you um, pr uh, prepare... Uh, to divide, the, uh, you prepare to replicate the DNA is one of the main things you do. Now, um, the way in which DNA is replicated is that uh, DNA polymerases set off from these portions of the DNA known as origins of replication. Now, in order to get the DNA polymerases to actually bind to these origins of replication, you have to set up what are known as pre-replication complexes on those origins of replication. And the setting up of these pre-replication complexes uh, is done in the G1 phase of the cell cycle. Okay, right. Now, in order to then move from G1 phase into S phase of the cell cycle, so let's say this is S phase 
here, which is the phase where the origins of replication actually fire. So the uh, DNA polymerase leaves the origin of replication and gets ready, basically, to act. Well, it actually begins replicating the DNA, replicating the genome. Uh, so that occurs in S phase. Basically, to move from G1 to S, what has to happen is the levels of cyclin-dependent kinase 4 uh, with cyclin D have to rise. So the levels of a certain cyclin D CDK4 complex has to go up. Okay, so the levels of cyclin D CDK4 has to go up in order for you to move from G1 to S. And that's because the uh, cyclin D CDK, um, CDK4 complex uh, phosphorylates the retinoblastoma protein to inactivate it. And in, by phosphorylating the retinoblastoma protein, it releases the E2F transcription factors along with their dimerization partner, which then go off and uh, activate the transcription of genes that are needed to, um, needed to um, push you into the S phase of the um, cell cycle. So, uh, in order to move from G1 to S, you need high levels of cyclin D CDK4 complexes, which has another name. It's also known as the G1 CDK. Okay, so that complex is called the G1 CDK, not CDK4. CDK4 alone is just CDK4, it's not G1 CDK. The complex of cyclin D with CDK4, this is the G1 CDK, and the levels of that have to go up in order to move from the G1 to the S phase. Now, basically, P15 binds to the cyclin-dependent kinase 4 and stops cyclin D from being able to bind to it. So it's going to keep level, well, it's going to cause uh, levels of cyclin D CDK4 complexes to go down. And when that happens, uh, you're not going to be able to move from G1 to S, basically. That checkpoint, you're not going to be able to overcome it. Uh, so it's going to completely halt you in G1 phase and stop you replicating the DNA. Okay, so that's the function of P15. So we've seen that when TGF-beta binds to its receptor, it causes an increase in the expression of this P15 tumor suppressor gene, and that is going to halt the cell's uh, progression through the cell cycle if it's in the G1 phase, basically, by stopping the rise in the level of uh, cyclin DCDK4 complexes. Okay, in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at... Um, the uh, P21 protein.